Civil Engineering Academy, helping you in your journey to pass the PE. All right, welcome to Civil Engineering Academy. Today we're solving a problem from structures. A steel I-beam has its cross section shown. Find the elastic section modulus in inches cubed about the major centroid axis. So the first thing we need to do is need to establish a coordinate system. I'm going to say the bottom of this is my x-axis. So everything will be measured from that x-axis. Okay? And the elastic section modulus is S, and that is equal to I over C. I is your moment of inertia. C is the distance from the centroid to the extreme fiber. So somewhere in here, I've got this dashed, somewhere in here is probably going to be the centroid. And we need to solve for that to get C. We also need to find I. If you're using the Civil Engineering Reference Manual, this equation comes from 42.30 as well as 44.39. And that should help you out to find that. The other equation I'm going to be drawing from is equation 42.6, which uh, helps me to find y sub c, the, the actual centroid, and the other equation that we'll be drawing from is the parallel axis theorem to find i, which is equation 42.20. Okay, so we'll be using all those equations. First thing I'm going to do is try to organize some of my data. I've already marked this as 1, 2, and 3. Each of these rectangles represents 1, 2, 3. And first thing I'm going to do is solve for my areas. So area of 1 is just 8 inches by half an inch, which is 4 inches. Area 2 is going to be 12 by 1. That's 12 inches. And area 3 3 is going to be 10 by 1 is 10 inches. Next thing I need to do is I'm going to solve for I. And the reason why I'm getting all these is because I'm looking at equation 42.20, which basically states that I need to find Ix1 plus the area times D1 squared. And D1 is distance from the center of each piece, the, di the difference between the center of each piece and where the centroid actually is. And we'll solve for that. Okay, and we're going to have three of these because we have three pieces. So we've got to find Ix2 plus the area of 2 times D2 squared plus Ix3 plus the area of 3 three area three times D three squared okay that's what we're doing so to get I1 we just use the equation of uh, moment of inertia for a rectangle which is BH cubed over 12 and this is also found in the same chapter as you're looking that up okay so that's just 8 times 0 0.5 cubed over 12, which is 0.0833. I2 is going to be 1 times 12 cubed over 12. That's 144. And I3 is going to be base times height, 1 inch cubed over 12. This is for that bottom piece. That's going to be 0.833. Okay, now we need to solve for R. We need to get Y. We gotta find this centroid in order to do that. We're gonna use equation 42.6 and that says that YC, we gotta find each individual YC, the centroid of each individual piece. So the first piece is basically from this axis, our X axis up to the center of that point which is going to be 1 inch plus 12 inches, that's 13, plus half of that. So 13.25. 13.25. YC2 is going to be 1 inch plus 6 inches, that's 7 inches. 
inches and YC3 is going to be just half an inch. Okay, now we got those. Now we can solve for our Y, our centroid, which is if you're following uh, equation 42.6, states that we take the area, area 1, multiply that by our YC1, so the centroid from our axis to that piece, which is 13.25, plus area 2 times Y2, which is 7, plus area 3, times y3 all over all the areas sum of all the areas so that's 4 plus 12 plus 10 okay so the centroid of this whole thing is going to be 5.46 inches so this dimension is 5.46 inches all right now that we know that we can get we can solve for these D's in this equation and we can plug it all together and get it so let's solve for D1 that's going to be 13.25 minus 5.46 that gives 7.79 so I took 13.25 that's up to this midpoint of this piece subtracted the centroid of the, piece, of the whole thing all the whole thing we just saw for and that gives us the distance from the centroid to the middle of that piece okay that's D1 D2 we do the same thing that's 7 inches that's 1 plus 6 inches to the center of this piece subtract out 5.46 and gives the distance to this from center to center okay 7 minus 5.46 equals 1.54 and D3 is 5, I'm going to do it this way, 5.46 minus half and that's 4.96 doesn't matter, I could have written this a different way, I could have said 0 0.5 minus 5.46 and got a negative sign but because we're squaring it, it really doesn't matter so just ignore that Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for our moment of inertia. So IX1, we just solved for, is 0 0.0833 plus area 1, 4, times D1, 7.79 squared, plus... 144 plus 12 times 1.54 squared plus 0 0.833 plus 10 times 4.96 squared. Okay, so this is the first one, this is the second one, this is our third one. So what does that give me? That gives me 242.82 plus 172.46 plus 246.85 all equal to 662.13 inches to the fourth. Well, that didn't come out well. To the fourth. All right. And to find C, which is distance from the centroid to the extreme fiber, it's going to be this distance to the top. Okay. So from here up to here is going to be 13.5 minus 5.46, and that equals 8.04 inches. So S equals our I over C, 662.13 divided by 8.04. That gives me 83.35. The answer is... C. Well, I hope this helped you. This was a long equation, a long problem, but it had multiple parts to it. Um, there's, there usually is one of these on the test about moments of inertia or composite members or something to do with those. So I encourage you to really study up on these. And if you need more tips and tricks, head on over to civilengineeringacademy.com. Thanks for being here.